Greetings today. I'm missionary evangelist Randy McGee with Rivers of Living Waters Ministries, and it's my joy and my privilege today to be back with you. We have been off the air for a couple of weeks now because we've been on tour in ministry in Illinois and in various places, and it's just not been possible for us to record. But I am so happy today to be able to be back online again with you and present to you today another biblical moments thought for you to consider today. From Mark chapter 2 and verses 1 through 12, we find the following passage of Scripture. A few days later, when Jesus again entered Capernaum, the people heard that he had come home. They gathered in such large numbers that there was no room left, not even outside the door, and he preached the word to them. Some, some men, came and brought to him a paralyzed man, carried by four of them. Since they could not get into the place where Jesus was, they made an opening in the roof above Jesus by digging through it and then lowering the man who was lying on a cot before him. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralyzed man, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now some teachers of the law were sitting there thinking to themselves, why does this fellow talk like that? He is blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? And immediately Jesus knew in his spirit that this was what they were thinking in their hearts. And he said to them, why are you thinking these things? Which is easier, to say to this paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up, take your mat, and walk? But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. So he said to the man, I tell you, get up, take your mat, and go home. He got up, he took his Matt, and he walked out in full view of them all. And this amazed everyone. And they praised God, saying, We have never seen anything like this. In Mark chapter 1, Jesus began his very public ministry in the city of Capernaum. He entered the town and immediately began to preach about the kingdom of God. And in that chapter, Jesus also demonstrated his great power. He cast out demons and healed diseases of every kind. And from Mark chapter 1, verse 32, we learn that Jesus must have healed nearly every sick person in that town. The people flocked to Jesus to see what he would do next. Each miracle left them hungry for more. To escape this frenzy, Jesus and his four disciples left Capernaum and began a preaching tour through Galilee, as we find in chapter 1, verses 38 through 39. Now that preaching tour is over, and Jesus and his men return once again to Capernaum. This town was an important place in the life and ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. It was here that he put his great healing power on public display. It was here in Capernaum that Jesus Christ made his very public claims to be the Messiah. But Capernaum had a problem. This city valued the miracles more than the message or the Messiah. They wanted the spectacular, and they rejected our Lord's offer 
of salvation. And as a result, Jesus later pronounced a curse upon the city in Luke 10, verses 13 through 15. Those who have received much from the hand of the Lord and rejected it will face the greater judgment we find in Luke 12, 48. Frankly, I would rather go to hell from anywhere than from a pew in a Bible-believing church. So Jesus and his men return to Capernaum, and we are told that they enter into the house. This is probably a reference to the home of Peter. They entered town, and with no fanfare, they came, but words soon got out that Jesus was back in Capernaum again. And when the people heard that the miracle worker had returned, they flocked to the house where he was staying once again. You know, churches have to deal with all kinds of rumors in this time. Most of the rumors started on churches are, we find, to be very negative in their thoughts and meaning. The greatest rumor that can get out on a church is for people to start hearing the rumor that Jesus is in the church. Jesus has Drawing power, you see, as we find in John 12, verse 32. You see, when he is lifted up and the word gets out, people will come. Jesus is in the house and the crowds have come to see him and to see what he will do. So I encourage you today. In fact, let's all determine to lift Jesus up and ask him into our churches, into our homes, to our families, and see what he will do. You see, he's anxious today to show us his love. He's anxious today to heal us physically. He's anxious today to heal our hearts and our spirits. He's anxious today to do incredible things in our lives. If only we will look to him first, focus on him, and let him have his perfect will and way in all that we say and in all that we do. Thank you once again for joining us today for this biblical moment of thought. I hope that you will join us weekly for our YouTube videos. You can find us on www.youtube.com forward slash at R-O-L-W-M-I-N. There you will find our library of biblical moment recordings, and we encourage you to, to use those to be an encouragement and a challenge to you in your spiritual walk. You may also email any prayer requests to us at R-O-L-W-M-I-M -M at gmail.com. And we will be sure to pray for your requests and stand with you and trust for answers to every prayer. Again, I thank you for joining us today. Again, it is a great joy to be able to share these thoughts with you. And until next week, we pray God's blessings upon each and every one of you in your life, in your ministries, in your families, and in your homes. God bless you today.